someone who also is begging for a new deal, but I think a lot of people are calling his bluff because the Eagles already called his bluff and traded him away. The Jets are probably calling his bluff and not signing him to a new deal right now, and it's Hassan Reddick, the guy they gave up a third-round possible pick what for. What a wacky... Uh, What's going to happen here? Yeah, what What's going to happen? They're here. supposed to play tonight. It, it's wacky. It's weird, uh, Kyle and Mike. And look, it, it's hard to really understand what the point Hassan Reddick is making, if I can just be honest with you. Because right now he has been fined an NFL mandated about $5 million. Uh, when you take into account the three preseason missed games, that's about $2.5 million. When you take into account uh, the practices uh, and some other things, that's another 2 and a half or so million. So we are at $5 million right there. Tonight, against the San Francisco 49ers, he will lose out on a game check that is just shy of $800,000. And every game after that, same deal. So uh, he will never, in whatever contract, let's, let's play out this fantasy world where he does show up to the Jets and he does get a contract extension uh, and guaranteed money. And he is paid like the fantastic pass rusher that he has shown to be over the past four or five years. He will not make this money back. Uh, he, this is a poor, if we're just talking about just a financial decision, no emotion no ego this is a poor financial decision objectively and now what you're doing you're standing on principle clearly there was a miscommunication clearly there was there was some sort of communication where it was if i show up we will talk contract and so he literally showed up after he got traded to do his introductory press conference and then he didn't show up again. Maybe he thought that, hey, I showed up on the first day, so now we're going to talk. And maybe the Jets were like, uh, no, we, we didn't mean like literally as soon as you walk in the door. Like, you got to stick around. Uh, and so right now the Jets are not going to go crawling back to Hassan Reddick, no matter the outcome of tonight's game. They're not going to do it. He could help them. They know that. But until he comes into that building and they can actually do productive talks, he will not have a contract offer from the New York Jets. They're saying that, and I firmly believe them. The, be the best catalyst for an athlete in a situation like this is show him his team without him in, in HD, in 4K. You're going to get to watch a team that's extremely talented, the New York Jets, and Hassan Reddick is not going to be on the football field. And to your point, he's a great pass rusher, a guy that can really help this be a dynamic, complimentary style football team. There's nothing harder than watching your team play without you when you know you could be out there. So for Hassan Reddick, I hope they can get this deal done or you can get it back in the building. Well, we saw it just last year. Chris Jones on the sideline in the stands Thursday night football watching his team lose to the Detroit Lions. That gave him all the leverage. I don't think there's any scenario where all of a sudden Hassan Reddick has all the leverage here. But I have to go to Joe Douglas, GM for the New York Jets, and say, how did this go wrong on your end? Because you gave up a pretty sizable pick for this guy. This a guy who knew, you knew, wanted a new contract. That's why he got traded out of Philly and why they signed Bryce Huff, who was on the Jets last year. So you could have gone a number of different ways at the edge position to restock it. And truthfully, you really didn't need to restock because you just drafted one in the first round last year in Will McDonald, who barely played. So I don't know. I, I, These pass rushers, pass rushers are wild, man. These pass rushers, they need to hang out more alignment, JJ. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should, because when I hang out with you, Kyle, you seem to understand and know everything that there is to know about how to go about your business. And I would just say this, you know, because the Chris Jones one is a great example of two things. One, Chris Jones and all the money he missed out on, he never made back, right? In that, in that revised deal that he wound up getting, as great as he was, he didn't make the money back. So Hassan Reddick won't make this money back. And number two, uh, and most importantly, Chris Jones had been with the Kansas City Chiefs for years. Yep. Yep. These dudes don't know Hassan Reddick. He, like, they, they haven't played with him before. They haven't you know, commiserated with him before. So while they know they could use him, they aren't missing him because they've never had him. All right, last thing here. Bill Belichick. Uh-huh. Joining the likes of us. All of a sudden becoming one of the preeminent sports media personalities. Media I have darling. to read off this list here to see where all the places you can find them. Pat McAfee Show, regular appearances. Man and Cash, regular appearances. Weekly contributor to the Let's Go podcast. Weekly podcast coach with Underdog. Inside the NFL, 33rd team. Andy's on Instagram now. I Andy's mean, on the dating scene. He used to make fun of that when he was at the podium back in the day. What's going on here? Does Bill Belichick just have too much time in his hands? It, it is a lot of media, right, Mike and Kyle? A lot of media. And it's for a reason. And the reason is that 
He wants you, the NFL fan, a fan of a certain team, a team whose coach may be on the hot seat. He wants you to see him. He wants you to be loud to your uh, team's owner about wanting him. He wants these team owners to watch him, to listen to him, to say, man, he's really smart about football. We all know that, of course, but to see it every single day almost, every single week of an NFL season, when he is dissecting exactly what your current coach, whose seat is warming, what he did wrong, and what he could do better, and how he could get more out of that player that you have under contract, that's what's going on here. It's going to be an open job interview every single week for Bill Belichick. That's what sources close to him have said. And then also, he's going to be able to in a way, reinvent himself just a little bit. Hey, maybe I made some mistakes with the Patriots. Maybe I don't want all this personnel say. Maybe I'm going to be okay without some of it. And let me just coach football. We know he's in his early 70s. He's chasing Don Shula's all-time wins record. We understand that he would be a short-timer somewhere else, two, three, four years as the head coach. And so if he does that, can he set up the team not only for success in the short term, but will they be set up for success in the long term? Once he leaves, will they be in shambles uh, like we thought the Patriots would be until their upset victory on Sunday against the Bengals? So those are all the things that every time that you open up an app or change the channel and you see Bill Belichick sounding smart about sports, it's all about Bill Belichick becoming a head coach in 2025. Yeah, he's a superstar. Make no mistake about it. I mean, my older brother got to play for the Patriots, and it's not often that you hear about a coach more than the 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 teammates that he has and he played with friggin Tom Brady in New England but it's Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick Chris wants to talk about all the time and it's a great point JJ makes and I think fans they have such a recency bias and, and you need to be relevant and in order to stay relevant as a football coach that's not on the sideline with a headset you have to be at, at a, a, a desk a table in a studio somewhere talking about football Bill Belichick one of the brightest minds and to your point he's flexing those muscles every single week and he's like Check this out, man. I can still do this. I can still do this. You want me. There's no question about it. I will say, I'm not complaining about it. It's sick every time he talks about football. He has insight that truly, especially from a historical perspective, unmatched. He has unmatched. polls that are crazy, Paul. 